Star Wars 7x7 episode 2354 today, the second half of my conversation with Dan Zare, co-author of the Star Wars book. Punch it. <laughs> Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy, and thank you so much for joining me for it. So, once again, Dan Zare, a Star Wars expert and the host and brand director of Coffee with Kenobi. He is the co-author of the Star Wars book alongside Pablo Hidalgo and Cole Horton, and is a prolific high school educator who teaches literature and composition, and has a master's degree in teaching and learning. He's also a recognized keynote speaker, host, and presenter. He was a consultant for Ian Desher's William Shakespeare's Star Wars books, has appeared on numerous panels at Star Wars Celebration, and travels the world covering Star Wars products and events. He resides in Illinois with his wife and three boys, and we are picking up the conversation that we left off with from yesterday's episode. Before we jump into it, one more quick reminder, as I've been doing all month long, about Toys for Tots, the Marine Corps Toys for Tots Foundation. They are at toysfortots.org and if you are able to create a little magic a little wonder in the life of a child in a family's life a family in need at this holiday season then toysfortots.org is a wonderful way to do it their website connects you with the national organization but also connects you with local organizations working directly in communities near you to help families in need right where you live. More than 800 communities last year, and that's across all 50 states, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, you name it, they are working hard for children's and family for children and families to create a bit of wonder, a bit of something resembling normalcy in this very challenging time. Again, toysfortots.org and thank you so much for considering it. And now, without further ado, part two of my conversation with Dan Zare from Coffee with Kenobi and co-author of the Star Wars book. What I wanted to ask you about in terms of your own, your, your own learning, and you talk about you know, revisiting your own curriculum even for teaching, I guess there's a similar idea to revisiting what you know about Star Wars when it comes to writing this book and writing some of the sections of the book were there times where you you know did research and you were learning things that you had never thought of or never considered or i know you mentioned earlier how if you were considering something you would look at say for example with the section on leia you were looking at the trials on alderaan and that's i believe from you know leia princess of alderaan by claudia gray but you know can you talk a little bit about you know what your you know what your research was like to supplement your own Star Wars knowledge, and you know what may have surprised you to discover as you were you know, re diving into this world that you already knew so well. It was it was fun because, for example, I did some of the sections on crime and the huts, and to try to follow Darth Maul's story from the Clone Wars to Rebels to Solo, you know the Darth Maul son of Dathomir Dark Horse miniseries. Mm. To go through all of those things uh, is is pretty tricky. It's not really. It's kind of a more circuitous timeline. It's it's sort of hard to wrangle and wrestle down. So I had to watch that stuff a few times, honey. Sorry, I got to watch Rebels again. It's research <laughs> the book, and it was actually <laughs> true, right? It was actually true. <laughs> so that was cool because also Mason, my seven year old, and I were were we were watching the entire series, and he had never seen the entire series from oh, the beginning. Oh wow! So that worked out really beautifully. And it's sort of almost serendipitous, really, how that all kind of worked out. So I, I had to really refresh my memory on some of that stuff. And then the stuff with the Force, you know, there's some great interviews with George that he's done over the years, some with J.W. Rensler and just some other things that he's talked about in different interviews. The making of Star Wars and the making of the Empire Strikes Back books were invaluable resources, too. I, and years ago for Star Wars Insider, I did an article on midi-chlorians. So that helped as well because the force is very important to me because obviously it's not real but it is fascinating it is a, a very active organic part of the mythology it's both biological and spiritual and i wanted to honor all the aspects of that that george created as well as what dave filoni and other people have added to the force and the mythology of the force so that was very exciting and and daunting in the best possible way because i knew there was a lot of avenues especially when you get to the the living force 
you know, and, and the different aspects of this, the force in general and to try to kind of encompass all that it is while still very much fully acknowledging that there's so much that we don't know about it. I mean, and plus there is, it is important to say, I mean, I feel like this is about as definitive as a book as you're going to see or as we've seen in a long time. But you also have to acknowledge that, you know, always in motion, the future is too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mystery as well, even though there are you know so many well-defined aspects of the Star Wars galaxy, there also has to be room for mystery and for leaving things to some degree unexplained while still delivering a satisfactory experience in that regard. Exactly. You have... I feel like this book is, is sort of a great gateway for any Star Wars fan, whether you're brand new, whether you're only familiar with the movies, or you're a diehard that it consumes everything Star Wars. You have to try to find somewhere in the middle. And one of the nice things, about, at least about some of the sections that I wrote, is that everything I was writing about had already happened. <laughs> you know, and if there's other things that need to be discussed, they're going to throw in later. Either I don't know about them, or I'm not, or I can't really talk about them. Or it's not really important to where the characters are at, at that particular moment when the book is published. So you can, and, and you know, as we know, there's so much that you can dive into and explore that's already existing anyway. And, you know, there, there are certain key ways, I think, to use adjectives and adverbs to allow for something to be organic and plausible and real, but still not nail it down and say it's never ever going to change because I don't know what's going to happen you know I don't know your 10 years from now if someone's going to decide uh, you know what Luke is, Luke is actually a bunny rabbit you know <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen probably that won't happen right but you know what I mean so you just kind of you kind of work with what is out there and try to just you know if there were times when things need to be more ambiguous then we just sort of made that happen you know the entire team but for the most part, it was, um, I think, it's pretty self-explanatory as far as where you could go and where you couldn't go. For example, Luke's story's over, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a lot we don't know about Luke and his time training Ben Solo, his time working with Leia. So the timelines that we have here, which are very, very detailed and very, very useful, sort of kind of fill in the gaps but still leave a lot of room. I mean, the, the amount of time that Ben is... Being trained by Luke is is fairly substantial. I think is it was it twelve years or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. So you've got a lot of story there, and how will that story impact Luke's story? I mean, time will tell, and hopefully we'll get to revisit that someday. Yeah. So are you able to talk a little bit about the the editing process in terms of you know what you learned about how these books are put together? I mean, when you turn in your drafts. Um, this is another situation where when we've talked about DK books in the past on the show, sometimes the design leads where they've already got the layouts made. And so, you know, you have to stay within a certain character count. And it sounds like that was kind of the case for you as well, which, you know, makes sense still. But, um, you know, what did you learn about how DK, you know, formats their books and the way that they want stories to be told or at least be told in this particular case? No, it's, that's an interesting idea. Well, I mean, the layouts, every book, I mean, every section in this book is either a one, a two, or a four-page spread. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure you know sort of the patterns, like, you know, there's certain specific pictures or certain quotes. There's certain sort of like a, almost like a file, a G.I. Joe file card that's very, very brief about each character and, you know, key aspects of their the planet they're from, their force abilities, et cetera. So you work it within that structure. But what I learned is just the process of, you know, you make proposals or make suggestions about something and you hear back right away or sometimes it takes a day to, to, to get an answer depending on, you know, the depth of what you're actually asking. And then you get to see, you know, later once it's all come together, you get to see an initial first draft. And it's very, very exciting to kind of look through it and see, you know, what, what's in there and what was done with it. And, you know, what pictures end up going in, what quotes end up going in, because they, they're very cool. They're very open to your suggestions and your ideas, and they, and they will take anything that you're interested in, in sort of putting out there. For example, you know, I really wanted to have stuff in there from from the Rise of Kylo Ren miniseries. I really I, – that came out when I was writing that section. Ah. And, and, I, and I thought that was really cool, So and I, I thought the art was exquisite, so I made a couple of suggestions, and, and, they, and they, they picked them. 
which was really great. You know, when you're writing Luke Skywalker, what what pictures define Luke Skywalker? So my mind instantly goes to the cover of the Return of the Jedi storybook, you mm. know, or you know Han Solo or not Han Solo, but Luke Skywalker facing down Darth Vader in Cloud City, or Luke on Tatooine. You know, what what are the key iconic images of him? So you make like a huge list, and then they're gonna pick one of them, but you just feel good about just being a part of the creative process, while at the same time understanding. There are designers who are excellent at this sort of thing that have been working on Star Wars for a very long time, and they're going to help make everything come to life. So it's it's really, really a great process. Just to make sure that you and I have the same picture in our heads, when you say the Return of the Jedi storybook cover, are you talking about the one from way back when that has Luke with his lightsaber as he's arrived on the top of the sail barge and he's about to yell to Leia to get the gun and point it at the deck? That's the one, man. 1983. Yeah, I have all of those. Those are my original copies. I do, too. I actually just shifted stuff around in the studio office here, and and they were on the shelf and just pulled them out. And, I, yeah, I can't not have those in my hand and not just stop and flip through them. It's I'm just amazed that I still have them somehow after, you know. Oh. <laughs> moving across country and you know moving multiple apartments in my younger days and whatnot it's amazing and thank goodness those little treasures and sometimes i'll go through my collection i'll find something either i forgot that i had or just brings back this wonderful whoosh of nostalgia from when we were kids and it's pretty great oh yeah is there anything else aside from uh, you mentioned the rise of Kylo Ren? Like anything that, as you were approaching these subjects, where you thought, "Oh, these are absolutely stories I want to tie in," or you know, things that might have been even surprising, or that you thought, "Oh, nobody's going to expect that," you know, I'm bringing this to the table, that sort of thing. Yeah, the well, I think a lot of stuff. I keep mentioning the latest section, but I just really liked it so much. I feel like Claudia Gray is such a muse for Leia Organa, almost to the equivalent of Carrie Fisher, although Claudia would probably um, not want me to say that, but I really feel like that's <laughs> true. So her work on Leia Princess of Alderaan and Bloodline particularly stood out to me. I mean, heck, her appearance in Rebels, mm -hmm. right? There's just, there's a lot, there's a lot out there that you can dive into. Uh, a lot of, a lot of the Marvel comics were fun. I really wanted to somehow, even though I didn't get to write a ton about her, I wanted to put Dr. Afra in there because I think she's a great character hmm. and insert that kind of stuff too. And, you know, there's just, there's just so many great characters to choose from. Anakin slash Vader was a little daunting. Then in fact, that was the longest section that I wrote is four pages long, ah. but there's a lot of words in there. And I mean, you're talking about arguably, maybe it's not even arguable the, the central figure in the star Wars mythology. Yeah you know, from beginning to end in, in every one that he impacts and sort of his family lineage. So that that's pretty exciting, powerful, and, and, and crazy too because there's been so much written about him, and there still is. Mm hmm Oh, yeah, and the story continues to be being built even in, you know, the Marvel comics now with the new Darth Vader series that takes place in between Empire and Return of the Jedi. And yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah, uh, the Vader Immortal thing that came out via VR not too long ago, too. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's just there's just a ton. Cal Kestis, uh, you know, stuff with him. There's just they are they are not slowing down. They're not making it easy on me, are they? No, they are not. <laughs> <laughs> and you. more's the joy for us, right? That's right. Amen to that. So I'll ask you one uh, last big question, which is that. You know, going through this process, I think it allows you to kind of sit back a little bit and evaluate the entirety of the saga as a whole, especially with the opportunity to write about some of the characters that you did. But, you know, not just writing about the characters, but about their place in this larger story and about the, the bigger themes of Star Wars mythology. So the question is, when you now sit back and consider the Skywalker saga as a whole, you know, how... How has it changed for you? What are your a couple of your new insights and realizations that you have about this, you know, epic forty plus year mythology that we've been told? Well, there's a lot. I mean, Luke Skywalker. I think the Last Jedi is a, is a masterpiece, and I think it very much illuminates the humanity in the hero and the humanity in in the mythology. And that, you know, for the ancient Greeks, Perseus, for example. 
was extremely relatable because he was, you know, super powered to a degree, but he was also very human and very, very flawed. You know, Hercules, same thing. So in all of your heroes, you need to truly have an, an element of humanity and vulnerability so that us common folk can relate to them. You know, I'm a, I'm a teacher. I'm a dad. I, I like to think I, I make a difference in some way, shape or form, but I'm still very human. I'm still going to make mistakes. So when I see my heroes that I look up to that make mistakes and are flawed, that resonates with me because that that is something that I can actually tangibly hold on to. It's much easier to relate to a flawed character than it is to Superman, who I love, but but it's harder to relate to someone who's perfect, right? Mm. Who or you know, I guess he's not really perfect now, uh, eh. thanks, thanks to some of the craziness in the DC Cinematic Universe. But, <laughs> but that, I think that it helped me to kind of put that in perspective as well as Ben Solo. And I feel like the movies, you know, Kylo Ren is, a, is an enigmatic character. They, they flesh him out much more fully in the last film, but to sort of try to contextualize him and his journey, try to make sense of his dark turn. And more importantly, his turn to the light, which I didn't think I would accept, but I really did because of the way that Adam driver sold it in the rise of Skywalker being able to write that down and articulate it helps because again, writing and teaching writing and or teaching something helps you to understand it in very different profound ways. So being able to kind of get my thoughts out on paper like that really made a big difference. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you. And I think that's, you know, even more reason for everybody who is listening. If you haven't picked up the star Wars book yet to please check it out wherever Books are sold. And Dan, Zare, for anyone who wants to keep up with what's going on with you, with what's going on with Coffee with Kenobi, to find out when you are tapped to write another Star Wars book, fingers crossed for you, <laughs> where should they keep up with you online? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All. Well, you can find me on Twitter at Mr. Zare, M R Z E H R. You can certainly find Coffee with Kenobi wherever podcasts are available all over the place. You can find Coffee with Kenobi on. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, all those places. You can find my writing on stars.com. Naturally, you can order the Star Wars book on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, Walmart, wherever you find books. And then if you're someone who has a brand that you want to build or you have you were thinking about starting a podcast or a blog, feel free to reach out to me, danzmedia.com. I can help you get that process started. And I suppose I should also mention that Coffee with Kenobi has a Patreon page with an exclusive weekly podcast hosted by myself, Corey Club, and Tom Gross, where we look at popular culture, Star Wars, all kinds of fun things. Terrific. Dan, thank you so much for joining me again on Star Wars 7x7. And again, congratulations on the Star Wars book. And I really appreciate the time you've taken to chat with us. Hey, thank you, my friend. I, I appreciate so much coming on. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. All right, that's going to do it for my conversation with Dan Zare, co-author of the Star Wars book and the host and brand director of Coffee with Kenobi. I hope you enjoyed it. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for the show, as always. And may the Force be with you, wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2020 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.